Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the stock AMD coolers on your new AM5 chipset motherboard. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to take a look at how to install your stock AMD coolers, either the Wraith style or the Prism style, on your AM5 motherboard. Now the AM5 motherboard brings a few changes with the mounting mechanism over what was on AM3 and AM4, so there are a few things to uh, take attention to, and also there's various different mounting types. Also, I should say as well, the preface to this, there are a lot of people out there that are probably thinking, this is such a simple thing to do, Mike, why are you doing this video? And the pure and simple reason is because a lot of people ask, a lot of people get it wrong, and a lot of people watch these videos. So clearly, out there, there are some people that need a little bit more hand-holding than others. So if you find this video to be a little bit too long and drawn out for you, then you're probably in that group of lucky people who pick up things pretty quickly. But for those of you that don't, I'll try and go through it as slowly and as carefully as I can. So first of all, let's introduce the parts. So we've got our motherboard. This is the MSI B650 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. When it comes to the processor, we're going to be using AMD's Ryzen 5 7600X. This doesn't actually come with a stock cooler, but I'm doing this obviously for demonstration purposes. Cooler-wise, we've got the AMD Wraith Stealth, which does come with some of the lower 7000 series. And also we've got the AMD Wraith Prism, which comes with some of the older high-end systems and also comes with some of the new 7000 series also. We will be taking a brief look at the RGB connections, of which the Prism has two, one of which is a USB connection, the other is a 12 volt RGB connection. Realistically, you can use either one. I'm probably gonna end up going with the USB connection, but again, we'll look at that later on when we've got it installed. So first things first, gonna need a screwdriver. So Phillips head screwdriver, uh, PH2 is probably the best version. Somewhere nice and clean and basically cat and dust free. These new LGA sockets are very, very temperamental and any dust or debris actually in the socket can cause problems with your processor or actually make your system not boot at all. So try and do this in a nice, clean, dust-free environment. Okay, so let's get the processor installed. So we've got our processor, which is our Ryzen 5 7600X. You'll notice in the top corner, there's a little tag there, gold tag. That goes into the top left-hand corner of the actual socket. So to release the socket, there is this lever on the side. So you push that down and pull out slightly. This will relieve tension. If you let go of it, it will have a tendency to flick up and spring around. It won't break it or do anything, but obviously if you can do it in a controlled manner, then that is beneficial. So open this arm completely, then you can lift up the socket cover, and this will show you your pins. I would suggest doing a quick visual, make sure that all the pins are okay, and there's no debris in there if you want to. Give it a little quick blow, just to make sure. Then take in your processor very carefully and gently. You can drop it in to the actual socket, lower it down as close as you can, and then it'll drop in the rest of the way. There are actually little lugs at the top and the bottom, or top and bottom, depending on which angle you're looking at, and just make sure it's in firmly. So that is absolutely fine. At this point, you can, if you want to, push out the cover on the top, or you can just lower it down, and it will pop off once you lower this down. So as it goes down through, you get to a point, and there you go, it will pop off. So this is a protective cover. Keep this just in case you ever need to return the motherboard at some point, because it will protect the pins. If you try to return a motherboard without this on, chances are they won't RMA the board because they'll say the pins are damaged, etc. Anyway, so there we go, that is our processor installed. So let's first of all start off with the Wraith cooler. This is the Wraith Stealth. So in order to do that, we're gonna to need to remove these plastic retention sections. So four screws, and I would suggest putting these back in your motherboard box for safekeeping, again, should you ever need to return the motherboard. Like I said previously, once you've removed those screws, if you lift up the motherboard, remove it, the back plate won't fall off, so that is a really good thing which AMD have introduced. So now we can offer up our CPU cooler. Now the CPU cooler has got four screws, as you can see, and they match up with the sections here. Now you can put it whichever way around you want with the AMD logo on either side. It doesn't make a great deal of difference, although if you've got a slightly larger VRM heatsink cover, then you may want to move it slightly. 
At this point, depending on how you're doing your system, this one has been used previously, so we don't actually have any thermal paste on there. So this would be a good time, if you wanted to, to put on some thermal paste if you haven't done already. If you've got some MX4, that is gonna be a great substitute for the stock thermal compound, which is okay, gets the job done, but I would certainly recommend, if you can, swapping out your thermal paste just to squeeze a little bit more performance out of your Wraith cooler. So this bit is really straightforward. All you need to do is to basically line up one of these screws with one of the screw holes. So I'm gonna do it to the back one first of all. And then you can line up with the ones closer to you and you should find that all the screws pretty much match up exactly. Now this is the bit some people get a little bit scared by. This is actually torquing down the CPU cooler. So what I like to do is to do a reverse turn a little bit until you hear a click. Very slight click there. There we go. And then do a couple of turns just to get it started. And then do the opposite corner. Same thing. You can apply a slight bit of pressure if you wish to. So I'm going to undo the screw. There we go. There's that slight click. Here again then, so we can do a couple of screws, maybe two or three just to get it started. Then you can just do opposing sides. So we're gonna do the back one next. A little bit of pressure might be needed to get it started. Do a few turns. And then finally, the last one on this side again. Gonna do a couple of re reverse turns. There's that click. And then we can tighten screws down. So left, the loosey, righty tighty. So once you've done that, that's all four in place. And then you can go around, just do one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. That one's already all the way down now. One, two, three. And again, start over. One, two, three. That one's fully down now. One, two, that one's down now. That one's in fully. And it might be just a couple of very small turns on the last one. No, a quarter of a turn, and there we go. So that is the CPU cooler fully installed. All we need to do now is to connect up our PWM connection. Your motherboard may differ on this particular one. Our CPU header is just here, just next to the VRM cooler. You'll notice that these are actually keyed. So there's two little channels there which match up with the actual socket there. So the screws will probably be facing you, or the fins are facing you, four pins, and just push it into place. Once you've done that, you can then, if you wish to, you can cable manage, just push the, uh, the wire down however you want to, just to keep it out of the way of your RAM slots. So that is it. And obviously to reverse the process, Depending on how long you've actually had the system running or whatever, you may find that your thermal paste will be a little bit glue-like, but just do the same thing again. So about three turns on each side. And doing it in a kind of opposing fashion. Don't undo one screw all the way on one side, otherwise you'll have some very odd mounting pressure going on. And potentially you could damage the socket and or the processor. That's all of them done, yep. So you can pull that off. Again, if you have got some thermal paste on there, what you can do is uh, just give it a very slight little twist just to break the seal of the thermal compound and that should be absolutely fine. So we can remove that and take that off. At this point, you can use some isopropyl alcohol and some wipes and clean off your CPU to reapply thermal paste. So now let's go ahead and do the other cooler. So this is gonna be the Wraith Prism. So to do that, we're gonna need to reinstall our plastic brackets. So again, like I said a little bit earlier, it's a really good idea to keep those somewhere safe just in case you ever do need to use them again. So we're gonna go ahead and put our screws in. These don't necessarily have to be torqued down very tightly or done in any specific order because they're going directly into the back plate, but just make sure they're all done all the way up. So with the 
the Wraith cooler again, if you want to, you can apply your own thermal paste on there just to get the job done. This one actually has got a AMD logo in the top left hand corner. So this will be matching up with the little triangle, which is actually on your CPU socket and also on the CPU itself, although that's now covered by the actual retention module. So in order to do this, this one is a little bit more tricky. So there is a arm on the end here, which needs to be in the unlocked position. So this is the unlocked position. Hopefully you can see that pretty clearly. So that is unlocked. And the locked position is on that side. As you can see, that is a bit thicker on that side. So it pushes the arm upwards to create tension. So this bit goes onto the top. So this part here, top of your motherboard. And on the other side, you've got this latch. So I'm gonna try and do it sideways so you can see this a little bit easier. So what I like to do is to start with the, the back one, first of all, and just push that slightly over so it latches over the hook, which you can see there, it's latched over the hook. And then spin the board around a little bit. And then you can pull the bar out there slightly. And all you need to do is just to line it up with the plastic. You might need to give it a little push. And over the clasp at the bottom there. So that should hold it in tight. So that is basically the hard part done. That's actually getting it installed. This bit is some people don't like this at all. So get the actual clamp and move it around and a little bit of pressure. And there we go, that locks into place. And then that creates pressure on the socket and also the CPU. The same applies for the actual CPU fan. And that just plugs into our header, which is getting still in the same place, it hasn't moved. Plug that in, and then you can cable manage that however you see fit. Now the next part of this is gonna be the RGB side of things. So if we spin this round, you can see actually, there's a couple of other options as well. You have actually got an option for speed, which is this switch here. And also there's two plastic covers or rubber covers there for your differing types of RGB. Now the first RGB cable is gonna be this one. This is your four pin, 12 volt RGB. With that plug there, that goes into the bottom of the CPU cooler, just in here. And then you'd connect that to a appropriate four pin, 12 volt RGB header on your motherboard. If you're doing it the other way and you want to install the software, which comes from Cooler Master, then you can use this one. This is a USB 2 header. So that will plug into one of the headers at the bottom of your motherboard here, like so. Then you can run this cable around the back of your motherboard if you wish to, and then you can wire it around into this section on here. So there, that is uh, pretty much it. There's not really a great deal much else I can say, apart from just take your time and you should find it pretty straightforward. So there you go, there is our AMD stock cooler installed on our AM5 motherboard. Wasn't too difficult. Again, for those of you that are pretty kind of up to date with how this all works, I'm sorry for the long video, but there's gonna be some people out there which really are struggling a little bit. If you get to any point where you find that the cooler has an extreme amount of resistance or you're struggling with these clasps, my suggestion is to take it off completely, wiggle the clasps around a little bit. They aren't always in the right position, so you might need to kind of jiggle it around a little bit just to make sure it's in the right position. Then try again, and you should find this absolutely fine. If at some point you get to the point where you're just giving up and you don't feel you can go on any further, then don't worry. You can reach out to us on our Discord chat and speak to either myself or one of the other guys on the Discord and we'll try and walk you through it as best we can should you be experiencing any further problems or any issues that I haven't highlighted here. I would say as well, I'm really pleased that the uh, backplate now is fixed in place, so there's gonna be none of that where you're trying to really force through and the backplate isn't in place. I think that's gonna cause um, things to be a lot simpler for a lot of people over what we had on AM3 and AM4. So there you go, there is our cooler installed. Hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, hit the subscribe button and the chime notification and you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.